it's Shari here today for Lawn Fawn, and I am going to be showing you how I made this fun summer coaster critter pop-up box card. So I'm going to be using the new coaster critter set that you can see here. I'm also going to be using a piece of 12 by 12 paper from the Really Rainbow collection. This is called Ruby Red. I like the rainbow stripes and then I like that the back side has the same stripes but in a more solid type color. And I'm also going to be using some of the smaller pattern papers from the 6x6 pad that coordinate in that Really Rainbow collection. So I'm going to get out my scalloped pop-up box card die here. I'm going to be using these two little panels on the outside flaps and then the main body of the card. That piece is the piece that fills on the inside, but I'm actually going to be using this little stitched sort of like a hill. Um, this comes from the theater add-on set for the shadow box pop-up card, but it's actually the same size as the insert for the scallop pop-up box. So you can kind of interchange these. So I've cut a piece of the 12 by 12 sheet to about four and a half inches wide. So it's just slightly wider than my die is going to be. And I'm lining this up really close to the bottom. That's going to help me line it up. And it's also going to help get that little last bit of pink stripe on the bottom of my box. So I've kind of got the pink on the top and the teal on the or pink on the bottom, excuse me, teal on the top. I wanted to get as many stripes in the box as possible. And then I'm cutting the second piece by lining it up in exactly the same spot. And this way, when I put my two pieces together, the stripes will be continuous around the box. So it'll kind of look like it's all one piece rather than two pieces put together. The fact that these stripes are kind of sketchy actually works in our favor because it doesn't have to be lined up perfectly and it still looks like it's continuous. So I'm also going to pick out the same stripe paper that's in the paper pad. So this is the same pattern just at 50% and I use the small little panel that goes on the small flaps to cut that out. I'm also going to be using this paper that kind of looks like notebook paper but with rainbow stripes. That's the piece that I'm going to put on the front of the box and stamp my sentiment on. So I wanted it not to be too colorful and too busy. I'm also using a piece of the blue plaid from the Perfectly Plaid Spring Collection and I'm cutting that same large panel and this will go on the back piece and sort of act as the sky for the little scene I'm going to create. Now I have some of the Perfectly Plaid rainbow paper and I'm going to be using that green plaid there and I like this green because it's got a pattern but it's still very solid looking so it doesn't distract from the things I'm going to add to my scene. I'm going to cut out three of those little stitched arched pieces. And again, this is from the Shadow Box Add on Theater die set. But these are going to be almost like my little hills that I create my scene on. Now that I've got all those pieces cut out, I'm going to work on stamping my images. So I'm going to stamp out both pieces of the roller coaster that come in the stamp set, as well as a couple of the little pennant flags, which I'll add to the top of my roller coaster, a couple of the cute little critters here to add to my scene, and some things for those critters to hold, the balloon and the cotton candy, and then the small roller coaster to go in the background. I'm just going to do some simple coloring of the roller coaster here. I'm using two BG colors, BG11, BG13, and I'm just putting that darker color kind of in the connections of the roller coaster pieces here, and then I'll blend it out with the lighter color. I'll do the same on the smaller piece so that the two roller coaster pieces match. I'm also adding some of the same colors that I'm going to be using into my other elements here. So you can see I added that teal to the wheels of the roller coaster. I added some yellow, made a yellow flag, a yellow stripe, pink flag, and a pink roller coaster cars. And then I'm using the purple for the flag and the balloon. And of course, cotton candy has to be pink. I'm going in with a lighter gray color and just sort of highlighting those little support crossbars that are part of the 
roller coaster just to add a little more attention to the detail of the image. And then I'm going to go in with some warm grays and color my little bunny rabbit here just with some very simple shading. And then I've got an orangey brown for my little fox. And I'm adding a very light, an E000 Copic for the white part of the fox because I think the white makes is too white. So he's going to have like a creamy look to him. And I think that really helps because I want him to look colored. I don't want the little white border that's around him left when I do the die cut to be the same as his body. That's just kind of strange looking to me. So I've got the coordinating dies and I'm just going to line all those pieces up and hold them down with some low tack tape. And you'll see that I am not going to use the dies for the roller coaster and I will show you why here in a minute. But I'm going to go ahead and cut out all the little small pieces using the dies. This makes cutting out these really small pieces really simple. Now that I have those all cut out, I'm going to fussy cut the pieces of my roller coaster. And part of the reason why I am doing this is because I'm going to end up cutting off that little piece of the larger roller coaster and there won't be the white border. So this way it'll look like it's done on purpose and not a mistake if I fussy cut right on the edges of all the pieces of the roller coaster. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out the whole piece. And part of the reason why I will be trimming this larger piece of the roller coaster is because it's just slightly wider than my box. So you can see I have one of those green pieces here. I'm going to go ahead and fold the flaps backwards on all these, just on that score line that's created by the die. And I'll show you that my roller coaster just is a little slightly longer. So I'm going to trim it off. And I'm going to trim it off right on that line. But I'm going to keep the teal part there. And you can see that if I had that white border, then this would have looked funny to trim it off. Because I would not have had a white border. And then I'm going to go in with a little black pin and just connect those lines. So that it looks like it was stamped this way from the beginning. Now I can start to assemble all my pieces and I like to assemble my pieces before I put it in the box if possible. I just feel like I do a lot better than trying to hold it up if I can lay it down flat. So I'm going to be putting that large piece of the roller coaster on the backmost panel of this card. I'm going to do the small one in front of that and then on the very front little hill I'm going to put my little critters so they're in the foreground. And I'm using the Lawn Fawn glue tube to attach all these pieces because you can get a nice small amount of glue. And I like the liquid glue, it lets me move this stuff around a little bit. So for the pendants, I'm just putting a little dot on the back side, kind of lined up with those vertical pieces of the roller coaster. And you'll see when I do the fourth one here, it's be, I'm going to put the cars on first so that I can make sure that that flag is high enough and it gets seen. So now that I have the roller coaster cars on, I can actually put the glue on the cars and then add that last pennant. If I had added it to the roller coaster first, it probably would have gotten mostly hidden behind those roller coaster cars. Now to stamp out the sentiment that will go on the front panel, and I'm just lining up the words to say, have a thrilling birthday. So I'm just kind of lining those up on my grid mat, and then I will pick it up with the block. And I pulled out the little exclamation point, but it doesn't always lay flat on my mat to pick it up. So I'm just going to add it once I have the other stamps picked up. I'm just going to add it to the end of birthday. I 
I'm stamping it in some black ink. And actually, the little lines of this piece of pattern paper that I use will help me line up my sentiment nice and straight. Now I'm going to go ahead and assemble my box. So I'm going to fold along these score lines. So I'm going to fold the inside or the bottom part of the box so that the pieces fold in and then the top where the flaps kind of fold out. And I'm just going to crease those folds with my bone folder. And then I'm going to use some double sided tape to assemble all these pieces. So I'm just going to put it on that little flap there. And I'm just tearing it off and then I'm going to trim the excess off with my scissors so that the whole little flap there is covered in adhesive. And this will help hold the box together really well. Now I can put these two pieces together and I'm going to use my grid mat to kind of line it up so I make sure that they're straight with each other. and just overlap them and make sure they're stuck down. Now I'll assemble the other corner here in a minute, but first I want to go ahead and put that same double-sided tape onto the little flaps of the green pieces that go on the inside. So I will do the same process here. I'm just tearing off a piece and putting it on there and then I'll trim off the excess with my scissors. So you can see how the box is going to go around like that and create the box, but I like to put the pieces in first so that I can complete the box by folding it over on itself flat and make sure that it all lays flat in an envelope. I folded those top pieces back because I was actually having a hard time seeing my fold line and I wanted to make sure I had these straight, so I just kind of folded those back so I could see where the top edge of that box is a little better. And I'm just layering those in with the large coaster in the back, the small coaster in the middle, and then the little critters in the front. And now that I have those put onto one side, I'm going to peel off the backer paper and I can just fold over my box. And then I'm going to do the same on this little flap. I folded it in, I'm going to fold it over flat. So now it's laying flat and I know that it's going to lay flat and go into a envelope very easily. So now I'm just going to add the little panels to the flaps and I've got the rainbow stripes. I'm going to put those on the sides and I cut these in such a way that the stripes go the opposite direction of the stripes on the inside of the box, which I just think is kind of nice. Just a little added detail there. The sentiment panel will go on that front flap. So when you open it, there is the green. And then that blue plaid panel was going to go on the back, sort of like the sky behind the roller coaster scene. To finish it off, I'm pulling out a very small cloud die, and I'm going to cut a couple clouds from this white piece of cardstock. And then I'm just going to add those to that back panel with some liquid glue. And I'm using my tweezers so that I hopefully I don't get glue all over my fingers and mess up my pretty almost completed card here. And then it's all finished and ready to go into an envelope and send to someone for a fun birthday surprise. So you can see how it folds perfectly flat here. And then when they pull it out of the envelope, it opens up to this fun summer theme park scene. So here's another look at that card. And a close up. Thanks for watching. Have an amazing day. Bye.